Hello, whoever is watching this uh, uh, video. Uh, my name is Susumu, uh, the director for Submitten. Um, and here with me today is our great DP, uh, director of photography, uh, Daga Malinska. Um, and uh, say hi. <laughs> hi. <laughs> hello, uh, everyone. Hello. Um, Thanks for coming in. And uh, today I want to talk about um, just watching the film together and uh, uh, the photography part of the production part of this film um, sort of uh, gives you a little bit of um, uh, insights into how we did this film together. Um, so why uh, can you um, talk about briefly like uh, how, how you became uh, VP, why? And uh, how has it been so far, um, you know, before getting involved in this project? Yeah, sure. Uh, I became DP by going to film school where I thought I will be director rather mm. than DP. But somehow I started shooting uh, film after film for other students and I became DP by doing it I feel mm -hmm. then I went to um, cinematography course in at AFI in LA where I I got a professional degree as a cinematographer and mm -hmm. after that I started working professionally only as a cinematographer which I've been doing till now mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, we actually had a previous uh, working relationship. Um, I had another short film called the Yakuza Number no. Two. Uh, she came in to help the, on the set, and we got to know each other. And uh, she had a documentary she was filming. It was it's called Ready Chef. Um, and uh, I helped her cut that uh, documentary together. So um, we had. A oh yeah. Yes. Yes. So so we we knew each other before going in. Um. Yes. And uh, um, the circumstance of the how this got it started was it's actually um, Daga came uh, sort of in the middle of the process. I would say really late in the process, um, a week before the shoot, um, uh, another DP that was signed on to this project fell through. Um, uh, she couldn't do it. And then we uh, have to uh, find a new person that can take on a project of this caliber and um, um, I found Daga um, uh, available uh, but uh, in Canada uh, and so we called her uh, cool. directly from LA in Santa Monica pledging crying and begging her to come down to LA to shoot this and uh, she graciously said yes to so uh, thank you for that uh what do you remember how 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 it has been like like what do you remember the craziness of like the beginning part of that do you have any impression yes well firstly i'm not sure if you remember but originally i was supposed to shoot this project mm -hmm. yes before uh, you decided to go another dp which you decided to do because i was uh, located in Europe, mm -hmm. which obviously was a hassle for us to work. And we both mm -hmm. decided that it's not the we cannot be together in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, of course, I took that decision very graciously. And, you know, I thought makes project came back to me anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe because I wanted it to come back to me and it happened. Oh. Oh, okay. Thank very you. much, you know, it, it was very funny that I was in Canada uh, trying to do some work and then you called me and I was like, yeah, of course, I'm going to LA from whole Toronto. You know, it's freezing <laughs> here and I can shoot a movie in LA. Of course, I'm going there right, right now. <laughs> right. The <laughs> so weather is great. nice, at least. Weather, weather is nice, at least. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. There was you know you offer to buy me the ticket and you want to hire me of course I'm going you know and it was 
it was a it was very very short notice but i liked the script when i read it and i i knew i would like to work with you so i wasn't worried really i knew that we are going to uh, have a good time actually yeah wow i, I nice. yeah thank you i i yeah i i i i feel like i give you such a hard time on this project because you know like like you said you know we discussed it beforehand and uh you know because of the locations and and budget budgetary reason i decided to go for somebody local and then you know i i hated to you know do that and then later <laughs> coming back and say hey can you actually <laughs> come on the set a week before without really knowing anything what's going on and but you did it. You came and uh, um, you know you show your professionalism very much, and I, I appreciate that. Uh, one more before watching the movie was that um, the prep. I just want to talk a little bit about the prep. So you came over here like a week before, like we said. Um, uh, you were staying at your friend's house, I believe. And uh, what what was the challenge of um, uh, getting into prep on? I mean, generally too, but like, um, especially with this project, what was so hard about it uh, that you remember? Mm. Uh, to me, to me what it. I what remember was, was the that... Go, sorry, go ahead. No, no, go. If oh, you remember to me, what was hard for me. Yeah, to me, what what, what was hard for it was that um, on the BFX, there was a lot, lots of BFXs involved and... Um, uh you know there's a shot you know like you it's not just a green screen sort of bfx but like uh, we i wanted to shoot in a real location with a bfx in mind so um like the house shot is like i'm i was thinking of compositing uh after we shot it so like we yeah. needed to talk about all that um so we had a conversation with you and uh, our bfx supervisor uh tony uh, at the coffee shop for like a five hours. Uh, uh, once you got over here, um, and I feel like that sort of relieved a little bit of um, uh, issue. But um, do you remember about that part, or <laughs> was it too crazy? Yes. You don't remember? <laughs> no, no. I I think that the maybe the tricky part was to understand what you have in your mind because you, uh, I wasn't that involved in that. Uh, story in that script in the world of the characters I didn't know the production designer I didn't know I didn't know the main people who are creating this film so I didn't know their vision and I mm -hmm. had to propose my vision how it would look visually mm -hmm. so how do you do that if you um, if you don't see how those images will look in VFX how they will be created no. but no. the meeting with but somehow I trusted you and I and I and I knew that you put so much uh, heart and you know time and love and money into this film I mm -hmm. knew that I, I, I was I wasn't worried that it will you know it won't be real I I I know you know post-production very well so I wasn't mm -hmm. worried about that mm -hmm. focus on my craft you know which is which is visually light and and the cam and the camera and the best angles and and maybe how to give the science feeling look with the tools I have you know mm -hmm. so camera mm -hmm. light camera movement mm -hmm. uh, without worrying about those special effects mm. so much and yeah. the meeting with Tony, uh, I, I, you know, I saw okay, he, he knows what he's talking about, and he helped me to understand a lot. Should work and gave me tips what I should do in order to do it well. So it all went well, you know. And I think we produced nice, very nice visual effects. But I remember shooting <laughs> the scene in downtown Los Angeles, <laughs> where there was this little, little house that looked like. Oh sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, she woke up. It's okay. No, no, no. It's the it's when the baby pees. Ah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> in uh. this this plastic thing. Okay, it doesn't matter. I don't know why it works like that. Sometimes okay. it wakes up on its own. Yes. And but what I wanted to say 
Uh-huh. And I saw this downtown LA location, which looked very like, I didn't think it's a great location. Yeah. And you were telling me like, and there will be mountains here. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to, you know, place it, every place the actors with thinking there are mountains in there and, yeah. and you know, and think about it all. That was kind of tricky. Yeah. But it yeah. works well. Yeah. All right. Let's start watching and then we can talk about it uh, more as we, uh, as we watch it. And maybe one more thing about yeah. joining the film on such a late notice. I mm. actually, I am um, actually a person who works well under stress or late notice. Like I get stressed, but I get things done quickly, mm-hmm. I feel. So, yeah. you know, instead of, instead of six months chats where you talk for six months about similar stuff, mm-hmm. I think you can achieve it in a week or two as well and as a professional dp you know your job is to shoot the film right mm-hmm. you know it's the director to know their story you mm-hmm. know i need to know what the director mm-hmm. knows yeah. yeah was it comfortable That's all i be- care about do, do you say do you say do you think that because we had a previous relationship that we worked together that that made you comfortable Definitely. It okay. that made me yeah, that made me feel very comfortable and I just enjoyed the process because with you I could <laughs> we could even argue or, uh-huh. or cry, but <laughs> we, we, did. <laughs> we would still you know, we would still because I cared about your film and yeah. you, I yes. um, I could take much more. Yeah. Because I, I did care, you know. Yeah. Wasn't, yeah, um, I was gonna talk about that, about that while watching, but um, yeah, like sometimes I feel like you fought hard in against me sometimes, but ultimately that is actually for the benefit of the movie, um, which is something that I so admire about you and uh, uh what you do is because you you know that that like ev- you know pretty much everything needs to look great. Um, sometimes I have tendency to be like uh okay with it but like you want it to be great like to be bring it up a notch than what i can imagine the frame to look so um i definitely like especially after finishing it i appreciate so much about it so i just wanted to say that awesome. thank you yeah um all right so that's what i do yeah you, that's what you do <laughs> <laughs> against the director's wishes sometimes you know um <laughs> <laughs> I think that's how it works. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. So let me share this. Can you? Hey, can you hear it? I yeah. will just talk over uh, the movie. No, no mm-hmm. don't worry about it. Um, so uh, I want to talk about going anamorphic. Uh, was not my decision. Uh, first, 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 it wasn't my first decision. Uh, it was uh, um your very strong uh opinion and then i agree and then i totally realized later you were totally correct on doing that what were you feeling like what, what were you feeling when when i said we're not shooting this in anamorphic um what was i feeling when i was shooting this in anamorphic yeah or like or me saying I'm not... I'm not shooting in this in anamorphic like what what because you were very strong uh, uh, about it you know well i i thought that you just need to see maybe what i have in mind Mm -hmm. Uh, and and maybe then i will be able to persuade you Mm -hmm. you know obviously we were very short on budget so even doing it in anamorphic you were like oh great another hustle in a way but me after reading the script i could not uh, after I, if I read the script and the script, you really got to win and I like the story, yeah. I always see it immediately in my mind. Uh-huh. I, I kind of see things, and and I had this thought that oh it needs that, oh you know, mm. it needs that that look, that that soft look on the edges, and okay. just more soft look in general, and this science fiction look, yeah. the the wider world. I I don't know. I just felt it. 
just felt we need it. Yeah. No, I think <laughs> I wanted you... it. So I wanted it so badly, and then I showed you examples of other films, and yeah, I like it. I think. This is the downtown Los Angeles. Yeah, this is. <laughs> yeah, what do you think now that it, it looks like this the, with all the garbage behind it? Like, obviously, you didn't imagine that's how I was going to do this, but. Come back about kids. Come back about Okay. Yeah, like this shot. I mean, I love this shot now that I look like it. What do you think? Did I do a good job on this? <laughs> Yes, you did a good job on this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think one one thing is maybe that the VFX uh -huh. part are a little bit sharper. Uh, you know, they are more yeah. crispy, and my uh, my anamorphic look is not that crazy crispy. So right. combined together, I can see a difference as a with my eye. Yeah, that, that's pretty true. Yeah, I think it's still even with like a little bit of a blur on it. I think we, I might have needed to go a little deeper. This is but great. Right. This is great. Yeah. And uh, can I talk about this whole how how we shot the bus scene? So the bus scene, uh, it's not moving at all. It's a uh, uh, bus uh, parked in a parking lot, and. Yes. Um, can you explain the methods of doing that? Hands up. Mm -hmm. So in filmmaking, we call it poor man process. So we usually poor, poor man process. Mm -hmm. We don't have enough money to have uh, driving scenes. And actually not only if we, if we do not have enough money, we do it very often for to save time, to, to make it better for actors, make it more comfortable for, for people, because there are ways of achieving the feeling of movement without actually driving the cars. Mm -hmm. And in filmmaking, we do it by using the lights on the side of the vehicle, and we are moving those lights to create the movement for the human eye, for the viewer. And mm -hmm. we are also moving the vehicle or we are moving the camera. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously there is no no one recipe for that. You you go on set and you try things out a little bit, you know. Mm -hmm. You you are swirling one light for 360 degrees, then you use another light, maybe mm -hmm. in front, which is softer or harder. Mm -hmm. There are really different different uh, things you can do. You can put leaves in front of the other light to create shadows. Oh, wow. And you, yeah, you can flash the, the light into the camera to create uh -huh. flares for the movement. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's how you do it. It's called poor man process. Cool. And yeah. if you want to see something through the windows, you need to put green screens behind the windows of the car. And then right. you apply the footage, you report on, on the other situation on this green screen. Yep. And there she was, working as a server. really like those scenes here. I mean, the close ups here. Office scenes? You ever pitched? Yeah, I like those close ups in here of yeah. Maya. Me, oh, Mia, yeah. Uh, yes, you did a great job. Um, can you talk about a little bit about the relationship you make with the actors? I think that was really important that you and Mia really like connected, you know, on like personal level. Relocation has sure. Been you like, make a uh, conscious well, effort to do that? Yes. Well, you know, I feel I find myself a person that easily makes uh, human contact. It's not difficult for me to do it. Mm -hmm. And I value actors a lot. And I actually love actors uh, since I had and I have interest in directing, always had, you know, since I went to film school. So I was always fascinated by actors. And for me, you know, um, a movie without good actors, good acting, but with good light is not really a good movie at all. Mm. And I always try to connect with, with actors who are in front of me, in front of the camera, because I always operate my 
I'm always my own operator and I mm-hmm. and obviously I'm very close to them mm-hmm. and if they if the director allows me mm-hmm. for that connection mm-hmm. I I do it and they they always allow for it and I somehow feel that Mia uh, wanted that and she was connecting with me she wanted to see uh, you know she wanted to feel comfortable and safe mm-hmm. so I, I wanted to give her that. Yes, yeah. True. Yeah, no, you guys are totally did it. I feel... Remember, I think you guys... Didn't you guys went to lunch or something together before the shoot? Yes, I think so. Right? With yeah, like a, get a drink or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I appreciate that too. Like that, sure. that you were making efforts like that. Um, cause that's well, gonna... you know, I like her. I, yeah. I like her on a personal level, and I, I, she's she's a great actress, and she's she's wonderful human being. So, yeah, uh, of course, you know, I, I, I mean, for me, this shoot was very special because of of you and of the of the friendship we have, and mm-hmm. you know, you you helped me a lot with my project, and I wanted to uh, contribute. As much as I can, so mm-hmm. it, it was. And then I went, as I, as you know, I went to Los Angeles. You know, out of the blue, it was a journey. It was, it wasn't just like work. It was, you know, it was more than that. Oh yeah, I see. Yeah, I, I, I didn't see it from your point of view. Yeah, you were like you're traveling. You know, you're in, you know, yeah, <laughs> a different country <laughs> than you were before that day before. It's sort of like a trip for you, right? Like it's like a journey kind of for for your own sake um yes yeah that's a that's a interesting thing to think about um it's beautiful those shots i really like that it's great. oh i want to talk about this the uh, upcoming shot uh mm-hmm. this one i i love this so much i don't know how you decide to do this reflection on thing on the frame like that it's kind of crazy in a way hey, uh, but i did I love it Gotta pick up my kids. yes my you kids. know i felt it was like her moment yeah we see that she wakes up but then it's like her moment so yeah. maybe kind of trying to confuse a little bit how she feels yeah and we could, of course, see it if we looked deep in her eyes. She's confused, but we could also add something more. And there was an opportunity to to put yeah. a light in, into the lens yeah. and create a flare, which yeah. actually coincidentally gave this weird effect. Yeah. So and you liked it and you accepted it. And is it is it more for you uh, like a improvisation on the set, like once you start to prep the lighting and all that and you start to find something interesting in there and there you have the right flare right there and and try to experiment that's how it happened or is it more like oh i want to i want this here before even going in i felt that with this shot i wanted the flare in there yeah wow that's beautiful flare to be that great but yeah. i felt i And you got cut off. Were you saying something or there was... Uh, about the reflection, the, the flare? Yeah. On the I mean, side? We can, or... yeah, yeah, we can talk about something else. So, no worries. Oh, the train. Uh... Yeah, very spooky. That's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like this shot, it was, like you have no idea this shot would look like this, uh, or, or that there will be something like this in the shot. If I knew about it, you mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I wasn't sure what to imagine, you know, but yeah, you, yeah. you were explaining that to me, so... Mm-hmm. My... There was well, great job on it. Yeah. Now she has more cheese. <laughs> more cheese. And tomato. 
that was tricky this location for me to shoot because it was very small very small and yeah very little yeah and we couldn't really show where we are that much yeah because it had many small rooms uh -huh. so couldn't place the camera and show the whole space inside yeah and uh it this this is something else it's so sorry uh our other take frame for it too is that um i didn't really spend uh a lot of budget and also uh more consideration into building a production design um so i i remember you felt like uh, the frame needs something more in there like the the shot of the girl sleeping on the bed you you were saying like we need something to more feel like it feels more like you know they're living there so you know we have to find like a bags and like hanging clothes over the ceilings and all that stuff so it feels a little more like kind of chaotic house feeling and uh all, 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 all just to say that that uh, i was very um, happy that you were paying attention to little bits of details of you know framing everything in the frame basically so no worries of course yeah. remember the the angel behind it we were talking about this the angel angel the statue of angel right behind her when on, on this close-up no is there a statue of angel yeah there's a left uh, one on one behind you right here right here on the left Maybe you don't remember. Right there. Okay, I can see it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, have we spoken about it on day on the day? Yeah, we spoke about it on the day. Like we, uh, like obviously we didn't bring it in. We found it on the house, and uh, I think Lisa and you were like, "Well, we need to bring that within the frame because it looks cool." And it's also it was also empty without it. So you you guys put it to put it there, which is. Uh, I think it's a great decision to do that. I'll be honest with you. I, I don't remember that. <laughs> Maybe okay. it was Lisa. Yeah, I think Lisa probably worked uh, about it. Yeah. And the mountains all three, so you definitely didn't see it. <laughs> <laughs> You know, in this film, it was great, the, the variety of locations, like house, and then it was nice to shoot outside, all of yeah. that. Yeah. It was people... tricky, but it looks beautiful. Yeah. And then people are surprised that I say that I shot everything in LA. Um, it's like, there's a lot of different locations in LA. I think people didn't, didn't know before. Um, and this location was a great find because you could see the mountain, but you can also see a little bit, of, little, little bit of like a river, like stream, you know, water streaming place that we can shoot the river scene. Um, obviously, it's not a lot of water, <laughs> but but it worked. It worked. Remember anything from this day, the mountain scene? Not a lot. Well, a lot of, a lot of, you know, running, I guess, figuring out. Yeah. Where shall we be in mm -hmm. this location? Mm -hmm. Looking at it, I think we made the, all the right choices. Yeah, I think we did. It was handheld. I was doing a lot of handheld that day. Yep. You had uh, lots of gears around you. We also brought in um, Dolly, the. Yeah, what do you call it? Something Dolly? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. 
We did it. So what do you what do you think about the film? About how long it is and uh, like to... I well obviously uh I'm obviously I'm very happy about it now with all these um response I'm getting from the movies and you know dust the network uh taking chances on us to you know put this on their um you know short films to be selected and I'm very happy about it um I'm very happy about what we did together um it looks amazing um there is something that I, I feel like on the script side I didn't spend enough time or I mean I spent a lot, a lot of time on it but I couldn't figure out a way to tell especially within this short amount of time so that's what I'm focusing on right now is to write more to it so I can spend more time um developing a story uh because I you know we kind of built a world so there's obviously a lot of things that needs to be explained a little better um but yeah overall I was very pretty happy how about you yeah, I'm also I'm also very happy about it. <laughs> we are all two of like maybe we should we should we should maybe explain to audience that I'm a mom of, of a young girl who is uh -huh. <laughs> taking a lot of my energy and uh, yes. So you know I'm a, I'm a little bit <laughs> not so no, yeah. Well, yeah, uh, we should yes. I'm very happy about it. I just feel like it would need a little bit more of explanation, you know, mm -hmm. of uh, of her decisions, of where we are, of the world. So obviously, mm -hmm. a feature feature length format. It's always tricky to do it all in a short film if the story is complex and the a hero has to make a difficult decision. Mm -hmm. You know, it's difficult to say it all in short film. Always, it's yeah. always tricky yeah um i um yeah i i had to make a choice of uh whether or not this film to just explain explain explanation of the world because i could do that but I, I wanted to focus on her and her journey so there's some stuff that needs to um that that i have to decide to put aside to really explain mm -hmm. i wanted to really center on her and her uh journey so so obviously that's that's that 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 I have um taken notes from a lot of people and as um uh, I take um the points are being taken. Um so that's what I'm doing right now. But and, you uh, know, the po the points are being taken, but fuck it, like you made it the way you want. <laughs> and that's that's what's that's that's your director's right, you know, yeah. to that's your story and you it's your film and you should be faithful to how you wanted to tell it yeah and, you know yep. me personally i'm very happy with the images and i'm proud of them i can see two things i you know i kind of bite my nails when i watch oh, yeah? it but tell me tell me what are those i, I, I love no, to no 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 you, know, want <laughs> you don't want to, to say my... <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, there's one Mm -hmm. uh, we crossed the line. I think the actor is looking in the wrong direction. Oh, okay. Once. Mm -hmm. uh, and the flare in the bus. The bus, yeah. Is it a little too much? Yeah. I, it, it, for me, with time now, it's a little bit too much. I think it's also difficult for flare to be... um, Because it's hard for you to select which one to do it. Uh, it's only when you editing you know which one is going. But I choose for the performance of, yes. of course first. Yeah, of so, course, of course. Um, so you know we ended up using a lot of flare shot just because that's there's a lot of flares in that. But I think you did it because you know we wanted to have that option. But obviously it's yeah. really hard to choose. We wanted, you know, well not of course. At the time we were thinking about it, mm -hmm. oh, do we want this player or not? Will it be mm -hmm. too much or not? But we mm -hmm. also had a bus, simple mm -hmm. bus, you know, and it mm -hmm. didn't look like in a science fiction film. So yeah. our thinking was that the flare will give us the, the, the look, the science yeah. fiction look. 
yeah. When I yeah. watch it now, I feel that it's taken a little bit from the face of the actor, which is the most important. Mm. Like it's, really, you know, so much going on that I uh, I find it disturbing, but it also may work positively. I think it depends, you know, it depends from the audience who, who watches it. But I wish it was a little bit less. Yeah. I see. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I think that that discussion wasn't just you. I, I had a discussion with the previous DP as well to, about how we can differentiate the real location and, and make it look like a sci-fi um, because you need that extra something on it to make it look like a sci-fi because otherwise it just looks like the current world. Yeah. So what what would you do? So 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 your decision to do that flare is definitely, for me, I think it, it definitely makes sense. Um, so I I'm not I I right now I'm not like regretting that decision. It looks amazing. Um, especially on the and first shot. Know. Yeah, first shot on the bus. Uh, you know, be, like even before going in, um, you know the people on the line going in the bus and you see the flare, but also like lenses because so like tilted so much with the anamorphic and it's probably the widest anamorphic at that point so you got this really weird sort of skewer uh view over the real world uh the, the world which i think makes it a little more sci-fi in that way mm -hmm. yeah and you know that was one of the reasons why i really wanted to shoot anamorphics because i mm -hmm. knew that we need those i felt we need those visual elements to make this science fiction world and mm -hmm. achieving flair with anamorphics, you mm -hmm. you get those uh, like a straight what's line the word through in? across the vertical. No, yeah. that's not vertical. Horizontal. Horizontal. Yeah, you get those horizontal lines, and mm -hmm. that would be much more difficult to achieve with with spherical's, or you, you know, we wouldn't get that nice effect. Yeah. So that was one of the reason, and most of science fiction films are being shot with, with um, anamorphics. You know, I'm not original in here anyhow. So when I heard science fiction, I was like, yeah, this is the anamorphics. You know? mm. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. but yeah, I think we made the right call. Okay, so just to wrap it up, uh, before we go, I want to ask you what I've been asking everyone, which is uh, what are you up to, um, how you are doing, and any interesting projects coming up. Obviously, you know, you are um, a recent mom and you have a beautiful uh, daughter, uh, and then obviously that's your you know first job I, I, I guess kind of right now but do you have any other things to do do you have any other uh uh pros uh, uh interesting things to pursue for your career you're thinking maybe in the future uh tell tell us a, a, anything you have in mind uh, well as for now, it's a little bit tricky to to take a longer project because of me being a mom of one year old Lara, and I cannot imagine going on set fourteen hours a day. I know many of my colleagues or other other ladies cinematographers are able to do it, but personally, I cannot. I I cannot envision that how this would function. Mm -hmm. So my priority is is my daughter at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, however, I have few scripts in mind, or I talk with I talk with few people whom I know they will make some projects in future next year, uh, and I hope to get involved in, in some feature film story. Mm -hmm. For now, what I what I do to maintain my career is. Uh, I started lecturing at uh, mm. at uh, at school. Mm. Uh, it's it's you know after high school kind of college film education. Uh -huh. So I do lecture there every second week and teach the students cinematography and and you know in location filmmaking or how you how you how you solve different issues on film sets. So I went a little bit into education for the time being while I'm a mom to make mm -hmm. some money and also to get away from, you know, mom mom life all the time. Mm -hmm. All the time, yeah. Wow, that's, uh, oh, that's cool. 
Yeah, actually, I, I enjoy it a lot. I enjoy it a lot. I enjoy sharing, you know, my knowledge with those kids. And also, um, I have, it's, it's nice to be able to show them your projects. And mm -hmm. so they watch your projects, not mm -hmm. projects of other filmmakers. And it tells me that, okay, clearly I did something in my life because mm -hmm. I actually show them my films and we discuss my films and my mistakes. And it's great. Mm -hmm. but you know I also miss very much being on set and uh -huh. uh, once my daughter is a little bit bigger and she's able to walk and talk and say what she needs uh, of course you know I'm looking very much forward to to get back into the game mm -hmm. but I will be much more selective about the project I choose and mm -hmm. uh, I will only choose the films uh, to uh, which resonate with mm -hmm. in me you know which mm -hmm. i i love the story and i trust the story and uh, only with filmmakers i enjoy working with like mm -hmm. yourself mm. <laughs> mm. yeah <laughs> so yeah. you know <laughs> no we work really great and uh obviously i was gonna say like um you know like i was setting saying before you know i'm trying to make this into something bigger so uh you know i you know I hope I hope you say yes when I ask you when it's ready. Um, and uh, you take all the time you need uh, before that. Um, obviously, uh, the family is really important, and I don't want you to um stay away from that. And uh, but you know, uh, you you agree, TP. The the career is definitely coming back to you at some point. Um, in in your future. So, um. Just yeah, I think the I, I think the education route is actually a good way to um, maintain, uh, you know, the connection into the industry. Mm -hmm. my, yeah, a lot of my friends does that too. As the you know teaching teaching being being teacher and professor and all that stuff. So yeah, awesome. Okay. Um. Anything else? No. If not, okay, then okay. we'll wrap it up. And thank you, everybody, for watching. Uh, we'll try to do a couple more interviews like this with uh, other uh, members of the cast and crew. So uh, keep tuning in to the channel uh, on this channel that you're watching right now. And uh, I hope to see you soon. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Thank you, guys.